Hi, I'm Steve Legg. Usually I talk about comics, but today I'm going to talk about film and filmmaking, uh, more specifically editing and the film Apocalypse Now. There's something about uh, Apocalypse Now that you may or may not have known, and we're going to get right into it. In the second scene of the movie, a very hungover Captain Willard, played by Martin Sheen, gets his orders that will set forth the plot for the entire rest of the film in a scene that most people probably remember for this. Terminate with extreme prejudice. But after reading Michael Ondaatje's book, The Conversations, Walter Murch and the Art of Editing Film, I always associate it with this. Walt Kurtz has reached his. Did you see it? Let's show it again. Walt Kurtz has reached his. This is actor G.D. Spradlin. He's playing General Corman, probably named for Roger Corman, who gave Apocalypse Now director Francis Ford Coppola and uh, a lot of the other 70s film school generation directors their first films. Anyway, at the time the scene was filmed, Colonel Kurtz, played by Marlon Brando, was not named Colonel Kurtz. He was named Colonel Laley. In Ondaatje's book, Merch recounts that Brando said, American generals don't have those kinds of names. They have flowery names from the South. I want to be Colonel Laley. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I, I couldn't pass up doing a bad Brando impression. Anyway, this entire scene was shot with all of the actors saying the name Laley, not Kurtz. So when they got into post-production, Merch had to fix this so that everybody was saying Kurtz and not Laley. Now, obviously, you can cut away whenever somebody says the name Kurtz all the time, but... You've heard of Colonel Walter E. Kurtz? This has been verified as Colonel Kurtz's voice. Walt Kurtz was one of the most outstanding officers this country's ever produced. Murder two. Kurtz had ordered the execution of some Vietnamese intelligence agents. Then something funny begins to happen because you subliminally pick up on that. Uh, you're watching the film and you're wondering, why is it always cutting away when someone says the name Kurtz? So you can only use that so many times in a scene. You're going to have to bite the bullet and show people right on screen saying the name Kurtz. Pick up Colonel Kurtz's path at New Mung Ba. Yeah, there's no way around it. You're gonna have to do that sometimes. One of the most important things they have going for them is that when we're looking at the screen and watching people talking, we generally look at the eyes and not the mouth. Because if you watch this clip again and watch Harrison Ford's mouth, the jig is up. He's clearly not saying Kurtz here. Pick up Colonel Kurtz's path at New Mung Ba. Harrison Ford's head movement here is also really good at obscuring the fact that his dialogue's been looped over in post. Whether or not there was a different take originally, where he was more looking straight on at the Willard character or into the, into the camera, I don't know. But the fact that they used this shot has really uh, contributes to hiding the fact that Laylee's been changed to Kurtz. Now this is probably my favorite use of uh, misdirection uh, by understanding the psychology of cinema. Um, to put this into context, in Merch's own book on editing, In the Blink of an Eye, he details that he used to put a little two-dimensional uh, cardboard cutout of the audience, or at least theatrical chairs, at the bottom of his chem editing screen. So he could put it into perspective, because when you're watching something in a theater, uh, you have to turn your head. You don't just use your eyes like with a television, where you can absorb all of the visual information all at once. In, in a movie screen, you actually have to turn your head somewhat. And so knowing that, he put this shot of Martin Sheen before the shot where the character says Laylee on screen. And if you notice the shot of Martin Sheen that precedes this shot, you'll notice that he was handed a piece of paper and he's holding it up clearly into frame, and he's not in this. So this is probably a, a shot taken from somewhere else in the footage. It's completely out of context, but it was moved here because Martin Sheen leans over to the right side of the screen. And uh, because we watch people's eyes when we're looking at people on screen, we follow him over. It's a little more obvious in the theater. This isn't at the proper uh, aspect ratio, 235 to 1. This is for my old DVD transfer. And um, so the next shot, we see Jerry, the civilian. And we lock eyes with him because he's closest to where Martin Sheen was after we turned her head to follow him to the right side of the frame. And then Jerry looks to G.D. Spradlin. And by the time we follow his gaze over, G.D. Spradlin's already said Kurtz, and we don't know that he's actually said lately, and everything's cool. 
And now with the help of uh, Cinevision 5000, I'm going to try to demonstrate the theatrical experience within the confines of this little tiny video YouTube screen. Now he's crossed into Cambodia with this mountain yard army of his that worship the man like a god and follow every order, however ridiculous. Well, I have some other shocking news to tell you. Colonel Kurtz was about to be arrested for murder. Another thing that makes this cut work is that Jerry is actually looking up in a very similar motion that uh, Martin Sheen is. And uh, so it's basically the cut is cut on motion and our eyes will automatically uh, go to movement when we see it on the screen. And G.D. Spradlin is sitting stock still, so we almost completely ignore him first before Jerry looks over and he starts talking. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's a little bit of Apocalypse Now trivia, and it's uh, it's kind of fun for film buffs like me. But um, this is something that's always in the back of my mind when I'm doing any type of editing. I always kind of think about this. And when I taught editing workshops, I used to bring it up because it was a good example of using all of your footage, not just resigning yourself to the footage that you shot in the context that you shot it. That you can go back through your footage and find something else and use it for a different purpose. Anyway, if you like the video, you can, you know, click on the whatever and do the things that all the kids are into these days. Later.